Sub Union of Universities, ASU, has accused the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Badabia Mila, of deception by asking the union to call off its eight months long strike in October with a reaching promise that the federal government would, without delay, upset in full the arrears of salaries members were owed. President of the union, Professor Emmanuel Oshodeke, disclosed this when he was asked to reflect on the speaker's intervention on the current situation of their issues with the federal government. He said the speaker needs to address the union as he still has the opportunity to prove them wrong by simply working out the implementation of his promises to the union. Reacting to this allegation, Chairman of the House Committee on Media and Public Affairs, Benjamin Kalu, says that at no time did Rajabi Amila agree with uh, ASU that lecturers would be paid for the period they were on strike. But joining us now is a public affairs analyst, Muiwa Ugulaja, to speak on this matter. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, us. my dear. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see you. Thanks. Welcome. Now, what were your impressions when you saw uh, this statement coming from uh, the president of ASU, Emmanuel Oshodike, saying that uh, the Speaker of the House of Reps, you know, deceived them, so to speak? Because recall that during the eighth month long strike, they had had, you know, conversations with uh, the Minister of Labor, Chris Ngige. That did not resolve the matter. There was a court matter e even in between. And mm -hmm. then, you know, the Speaker of the House of Reps now came in to resolve the impasse. And now he has been accused of deception. Um, thank you. Um, I felt a bit uh, disturbed when I took pains to identify the words used by the ASU chairman uh, as, an, uh, as, an, as a very enlightened person who belongs to that citadel of higher learning. There are some words that should not be used by someone of that caliber. Even if, even if you are to be true, to say that the number three man of the Federation, the chief law officer, <coughs> misled them or telling a lie, I think it's, um, it's not um, good enough for the reputation of, not just the man but the reputation of the Nigerian um, Assembly, Nigerian nation, and that of uh, the world assembly itself. Um, I know that Mr. Tumbojabemela, aside from being a member of the, apart from the Speaker of the House of Representatives, is called a legal luminary, and is very versatile in acts of lawmaking. And I'm sure he is aware of the trade and dispute has mm -hmm. 40, 43 sections, 1A and sections 1B, and uh, of CAP um, T8, and I'm sure he, will, he wouldn't have said government will throw away all because they want to accept, they want to make peace with ASU. So I want to appeal that uh, maybe something is strong, perhaps man has been misquoted, uh, because I know Prof to be very erudite, and uh, erudite fellows don't talk, who not utter such words. I don't want to believe that he has been properly quoted. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't want to believe that. But I know that Bajabi Amela will not sell off his constituency because of politics. Um, though he cannot put anything beyond politicians, but not this kind of um, agreement. And he is likely to have told them that he will intercede on their behalf. He said he was going to government. speak with the president uh, on the matter. Yes, on the problem. matter of the no work, no pay. But if there was an... The contrary can be proved now. Okay, I'm not very sure. But I know that if an agreement of such exists, and the man dares attend to that agreement, then he decides to vacate the seat. Mm. Because as the chief law officer, he must not hurt against the law. Mm. There is a law that says that if you have done this, Cap um, 43, Sections 1A did say that any employer of labor and has the right to withhold the salary of his workers if they go on strike without, one, adequate information, two, respecting the court of law, 
There's an arbitration, there's a court of arbitration. Mm -hmm. The moment that court rules, it must be obeyed. Mm -hmm. Nobody's above the law. That you can only do that if there is a force major, when they will not come for sittings and they get their full salary. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> and they get their full salary. Mm -hmm. And if they could get theirs, what stops the lecturers mm -hmm. from having theirs too? Perhaps from, that's their argument. What stops them? Mm -hmm. They have said that precedence. Mm. So that, that, that just it. What, 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 what impact will this have on the trust that people will have on these institutions? Because we were, we were talking about this a few days ago. The institution of the National Assembly, or let's say the House of Representatives, represented by their speaker, yeah. as well as ASU, made up of intellectuals, professors of all kinds, <sighs> represented by their you know, leaders, meeting in a room for a few hours and then they go outside the room that they met for several hours and what they are saying is different. What does this pretend? What does this, how does this um, impact on the trust that Nigeria, because it is either the professor of uh, Asu chairman is, is, is the one that is wrong <laughs> or it is either the speaker that is wrong. Now we don't know no. who, who is, is wrong or who is right. Yeah. But on the overall, how does this impact on the trust that Nigerians will have in them when ASU issues come up on board again? Well, it's unfortunate that um, Nigerians are, we have a very short memory in this country. That's the truth. As of today, their reputation is low amongst Nigerians. They give, give Nigerians the next two, two, three weeks. They be doing to shout Osana because we don't, we don't really think deep in this country. Because if we do, Nigerians today will not be asking for bags of rice instead of using their votes properly. They will not be asking for favors from people instead of voting to say that it's our time to put the right people there. So um, for now, the reputation of ASU and that of the House of, Asse that of National Assembly, African House of Representatives is low. I must say the truth. It is. Because it shows that it cannot be trusted. And um, it's also important to the fact that the two heads, something must, happen, something must happen. They must come to, they must give account to Nigerians. You cannot be taken for granted. Mm. You can't. That means if the Speaker of the House were to go outside and make any pronouncement on behalf of the nation, the embassy must be contacted to mm. do verification. Mm. That means if the chairman of ASU should go any place and make any pronouncement on behalf of ASU, or that the executive must be contacted. Perhaps they don't know what they are doing to their individual and collective reputation. Mm. Because if they do, they could put any place in the board and get, and get the truth out of it. But I still want to believe that for someone who is a, a law officer to, to say that the law should be negated for political reason, that may not be so. Uh, well, but... He hasn't, there, there's no proof yet. So. There's no proof yet. Yeah, so I we don't, need to establish I that. I don't want to believe. I'm, okay. not, I'm, not, that's, I'm not believing it. Right. But there's no proof yet. I'm not believing that. At the same time, for a professor, erudite professor, <laughs> that who is now a politician in a way. Really? So you can now, <laughs> he's a politician. Because if a old daughter, Christian Gigi, who used to be firebrand, who do like this to his fellow, Lecturers, if our own so much loved president of Nigeria, NLC, Adam Sosho Mole, could become governor and then <laughs> forget about workers, who else cannot, mm. cannot betray his uh, constituency? Mm. Ooh. So that's the problem with Nigerians. But I think it's not good enough. And I uh, want us to believe that uh, Nigerians are sizing them up. If they, if they fail to quickly nip this in board and come out transparently, so the two FIs at fault can then apologize mm -hmm. and say, okay, I've been misquoted. How do you under that? Everybody's always misquoted. Mm -hmm. I've been misquoted. It, it comes back to the, to the, to the, to the press. And, uh, so let us, that should be done. For now, I think Nigerians are not happy. And I'm sure we are, we are, we are clearly disappointed. And I think the, it's, not affect, it's not good enough for our image that we are trying to, re, we are going to build on. That uh, when, we, when we say yes, Nigerians are noted for their words. We should not be going back and forth. Uh, that, that is important. I think it's not, it's not good enough. Now, uh, let, let's perhaps look at how this will 
impact ASU's dealings with government moving forward? Because uh, the, president said, the president of ASU said that uh, they had a soft spot for the person of uh, Femi Gajabi yes. and that was why they, they had you know, that interface with him and decided to listen and return to the classrooms. Moving forward, how with this, because uh, we don't know if they, because they said they suspended the strike okay. as it stands. So I don't know what you foresee in terms of their engagements with government moving forward. Would it be them having a hard stance? What do you see? What kind of picture do you see? Um, I, am, I want to see, okay, I am of the opinion that ASU should start thinking of what to do aside from strike. Um, is strike the only option? With all the intelligentsia and the very good, can they request that only Nigerians, prominent Nigerians, not politicians, not even their own lecturers, not their own colleagues, should interface? Every time there is a, there's an impasse, can't we do that? Why should Nigerians who, are, who, are, who, who have no interest in the nation? be able to interface in questions that affect common man. How many of those who are interfacing now, how many of them have their children in Nigerian University? I want the speaker to bring out any son of, or daughter of his in any Nigerian University. Even the professor or all the professors, they should bring out their first sons and first daughters. Where are they? Are they Nigerian Universities? So what I'm saying is that they are not interested, their interests are not there. So they are ready to allow the system to collapse. Hmm. Because they are not affected. When I say they, those who are making decisions, I'm not talking about um, uh, grade, um, uh, lecturer grade two, lecturer grade one, who are just starting, you know, who students are calling my public schools, public universities. I'm talking about those making those decisions. Their children are not there. So let it be, any decision to be taken, let us have eminent Nigerians, prominent Nigerians, those who really love this country, let them come up and say, okay. What do you want? That's number one. Number two, what stops government from really following what UNESCO says? These people are saying that the budget for education is too low. And to be to say it, it is too low. This is what used to be about 10.7%, now just 5.17%. Now UNESCO says between 15 and 20% of the country's budget must be allocated to ed education. Before that could be arrived at, a lot of studies must have been carried out. Why are we not following that? What stops us? So then if, if you look at other problems, for almost 10 years, um, university lecturers and uh, workers have not had any salary increment. Mm -hmm. You are proposing a 23.5% uh, increment across board. Mm -hmm. If they say this is not enough, would you look at the indices now? Look, look, would you look at the economy now? I say, would this justify the, the request they are, they are making? So the point is that we must, all of us, the lecturers and government officials, must put their hands off like Pontius Pilate. On the <laughs> case of, uh, of um, um, I, don't, I don't want to use the word, the other word. Uh, <laughs> of the case of uh, um, uh, industrial unions mm. and let Nigerians who are committed, who love this country, the idea, who have their own money, who have their own interests, let them come and, and interface, and then you see that this problem will be solved. And let it be Nigerians whose interests, we call it, be affected, not those whether they attend sessions or not, who have their full salaries. <laughs> whether they <laughs> go to lecture, uh, to uh, to lecture or not, who go on sabbatical, I call it have their money. Mm. But those who will be there for Nigerians and say, yes, this is a country and education must not be allowed to collapse. All right. All right. A lot of people have talked about the need for alternatives to the funding from the central government. Yeah. And they liken all of these to, you know, institutions in the United States, in parts of Europe and parts of the Americas, you know, and so on, where private universities, public universities don't go on strike. There's an arrangement where, you know, universities are funded you know, their partnership, including infrastructure, buildings, and so on. But here it seems from salaries to buildings to research to every single thing, 
that money has to come from government, mm -hmm. which is obviously not sustainable. Yeah. Is this an opportunity for us to begin to even look in that light? We've been talking about strike of, you know, over issues, agreements since 2009, mm -hmm. you know, strike upon strike upon strike, yet no government has been able to meet up all of those. Is it one C? You know what? Let's, mm -hmm. let's leave this we'll government this alone. Strike. Let's mm -hmm. move somewhere else and think of how to engage with the corporate world, engage with, with other international organizations or even Nigerian, Nigerian organizations to begin to rake in funds to handle their own internal issues. Hey, that, that's correct. I'm talking about the institutions, bottled water, <laughs> and, and salt, sugar. What is that? What is pollution? Pure water? What has it got to do with development or in a in a university community? Mm. Where you could go into how to make cement? How do you make cement? I made the cost affordable to the people. Where you could go to how to make how to make a, 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 a aluminum sheets? How do you do all this? Instead of going to real investment, they are busy with that. That's number one. And number two, our businessmen are too inclined, are too profit oriented. They want what I call immediate profit. Instead of going to partner universities and popping in their money that will take time to recoup, they, are, they want immediate, immediate return on their investment. And that is affecting, it's affecting the boss. You cannot go to any research I think that you'll get the reward until about maybe six, seven years after that. Mm. That's when you can get the reward. And when the reward comes, you forget the years of the, the forget the past. But the, they're, not, they're not ready to do that. Another point is that most of our system, our education system is tailored towards just learning to forget. Mm. Get me right? Learning to forget. When you learn, learn, get a degree, then forget. The question is, how many of us have gone through the university? And talk about what we learned when we were in university mm. now. Mm. Mm. Hey, mm. Even when you are still there, the moment you are through, say, ah, I'm through that course. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> you just close the chapter. You read to pass the exam. Read to pass the exam. And, and you move on. You move on. Yeah. <laughs> so there should be a reduction of our curriculum mm. to make it more practical. So that on your own, you can say, yes, I'm a graduate. I can do this. I can do that. Mm. University. Mm. I've listened to some, some of our lawyers when they come to court to argue cases. At times, you want to run out of the courtroom. Mm. Mm. And when I now some of our daughters, I tell the patient, uh. you will say, oh, God, <laughs> mass burial, I will say, no. <laughs> so the point is that a lot has to be done. Mm. You must reject the education system. We, we must do a, 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 a reshuffle of the, of the scheme mm. to make it practical, to make it research-oriented, and to make it what, 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 what others are doing. When you say you're a graduate, you should be able to come out and say, yes, I'm a graduate, I can do this, I can do that. And then when inventions are made, government mm. should encourage. All right. mm. Popping money. Why do you have centers, incubation centers? Mm. I know there are incubation centers. What are we doing? Right. There should be. And when the such ideas come up, let incubation centers take them up. And then finance the project and let's see to fruition. Mm. I wonder why we have not, we are yet to make a kind of Nigeria. There was no professor... Professor, um, um, uh, this clickman from uh, uh, Unilag, this troublesome man uh, from engineering department Unilag, um, 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 Professor, what's his name? Engineering department Unilag, Unilag. Okay. Um, very troublesome man, you know okay. him? Who, did, who, who, who produced car? This, this car that could move forward and move back, that, it, could, it could move direct, it could move back Backward. without using the, any reverse. All right. Hmm. Um, uh, you, you, he's a very popular man right. who died uh, very young. Um, uh, okay. We'll we have you. to leave. The, uh, and, yeah. So we, what I said is that <coughs> let our universities, let it, let's right. get our, All right. let's get our things right and let's do the proper thing so that we don't wait for government. All right. And government should not be told to we do need duty. To, we need All to right. leave the conversation yeah. here yeah. now. Public yeah. affairs analyst, uh, Muiwa yeah. Ogunlaja. Thank you for your time. On Thank, you, my dear. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, my dear. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Well, this is the final show.
on the yeah. on, uh, for this year, <laughs> right, 2022. Yeah. It's been an interesting run, like uh, I mentioned earlier, mm. a very interesting run, talking about events, oh, various yeah. events, and, you know, stories that perhaps shaped 2022. Mm. Recall we had, we talked about Queen Elizabeth, mm -hmm. the passing of oh, Queen yes. Elizabeth. Yes. Uh, we talked about, we talked about flooding, mm -hmm. and we also had the issue of ASU strike and mm -hmm. all of it, like <laughs> we just, you know, concluded. And we had um, several issues. Yeah, we also had the presidential primaries. Primaries. Various political parties came up with their presidential primaries with all the drama that went in there. Mm. And recall that uh, some candidates that didn't win, you know, asked for their monies to be refunded. <laughs> <laughs> refunded. And uh, mm. some people read from that. So it was it was a it was a year with a lot of a cocktail uh, of events. Yeah, exactly, with a lot of uh, drama. And some positive things happened. And some, then we had the Jaqua syndrome. Yeah, it was the Jaqua syndrome was this uh, year. Yeah, it, it was we we year. had some. There was reports of some countries coming to even outrightly recruit Nigerian doctors. Yes. You know, in Abuja and so on. So many doctors left. So many nurses left. Mm -hmm. You know, and and. It is, in fact, the the medical or the health sector has not remained the same Absolutely. after that time. Absolutely. You know. So, so these are some of the things. And uh, now we, we, we at least this just happening now. We just lost uh, Pele. King Pele. Mm. You know, uh, in football, he's a phenomenon that uh, that has shaped football and governance and leadership and youth. And, and the games across mm. the world over the decades, and uh, he's leaving now. Jet, it certainly is, is a year. Is one of the things that uh, uh, we will know with 2022. Yes, too, and that Nigeria did not qualify for the World Cup. Oh yes, <laughs> the World Cup. Nigeria didn't qualify, <laughs> and we're, we're watching it for the love of the game on yeah. one hand. And, and then to support for, for African countries. Yes, that made exactly. It, yeah. And you know, Morocco made history for, by, for, for, for qualifying for, for being the first African country to qualify for the semifinals at, mm. the, mm. at the, sorry, quarterfinals, to get to the quarterfinals mm. at the uh, World Cup. So the, the point there is, it's a really in, in eventful year. Yes, of course, and musically and too. Music, oh, I want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say that too, that the Nigerian entertainment industry had a great time this year. Yes. Had a great time. Yes. From In any sector of the, the yeah. country, mm. give it to the yeah, exactly. sector. The, the, uh, so a lot of our musicians got awards across the world, mm. broke records, shattered yeah. records, new records, you know, a collaboration with Hollywood. Yes. And we saw a lot of, a lot of wonderful acts coming out of Nigeria. And then also, the uh, uh, Wakanda Forever. Yes, the, you know, they came to Nigeria. You know, came to Nigeria to premiere. You know, so, we can only look forward mm. to a, a prosperous year yeah. for 2023. Yes, the events will happen. Mm. It's natural with life. But we can only hope for a better year yeah. for everyone. The, the, also, 5G. 5G. 5G, 5G yes, technology launch. was launched in Nigeria. <laughs> I in know why you're so mentioning I won't, that. I won't so I won't say <laughs> <laughs> It's been a good run. Oh, yes. Thank you for being a part of uh, the program all through the year. We mm. must thank you. But let's tell you now that the views and reactions of all our resource persons are there and have no connection with TVC News. Do stay safe. Bye for now. We'll see you in the new year. Bye.